you guys can um, record your party today. Yeah, so what we're gonna talk about today is, it's gonna be a short one because I wanna open up the questions and do something different. But yes, again, introduce myself. My name is Ty Harris, Tyrone Harris, um, uh, Sequoia's credit part, one of Sequoia's credit partners and we um, are credit reps. And what we do is we focus on gap funding, but not just gap funding. Gap funding is basically encompasses a lot of what, um, what we do as a lender. So it's not just the um, it's not just gap funding in the sense of uh, the word gap funding. If you're a real estate investor or an, an investor, you know you know what gap funding is, or you've heard the term before over the last twenty or thirty years. But we kind of taken that term and added a lot of stuff to that term that has a lot to do with other things besides real estate. So so with that being said, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna um, start off with. Just simply, what is gap funding? And then we're gonna have a four part for this. So talk about what is gap funding and we're gonna go into the different avenues of gap funding. And then we're gonna go into a couple other um, a couple other avenues. That's why I wanna break it up into four part sessions so you guys can digest this properly and, and apply it because it's all about application, right? So what is gap funding? Traditionally, gap funding is basically what you use in a real estate transaction to um, to use to um, to increase uh, what your possibility is. So if you're using other people's money, you got a first loan, you're using gap funding for your down payment, maybe your soft costs and your hard costs and your closing costs to, you know, to overcome uh, your shortcomings or um, have money that you want to put aside and want to use for other things, you're using gap funding. So you're, you find a gap funder, you, they fund your um, your down payment, your closing costs, maybe some of your rehab if the lender's not funding all of your rehab. And then the next step for you is to negotiate what kind of return they're going to get to make it make sense for whatever deal you have. But for our gap funding, it's a, it's a branding, it's a coin term. So for our gap funding, we kind of take it a, a step further. It doesn't just apply to real estate. In our, in our sphere, gap funding applies to anywhere you're trying to bridge the gap. If you're trying to bridge the gap with working capital for a business, or if your client is trying to bridge the gap with working capital for the business, if they're trying to increase their um, uh, in increase their uh, business by opening up a new franchise or opening up a new uh, a new location, you can do that as well. If they're trying to start a business but they don't have the money to start a business on their you know on their own, or you know their credit isn't strong enough uh, to start a business as far as having business credit, or they're not getting approved by the SBA or any other lending um, a lending arm we offer, gap funding we use that as a term to use what you have to get what you need. So you bridge the gap from being you know being a wannabe entrepreneur to an entrepreneur of your own, and also using the funds to to create an environment to be an entrepreneur so you you can use this gap funding money to become an entrepreneur basically to fund your dreams fund your ideas fund anything you want personally using your personal credit without using your um, you know borrowing money from this person or that person or partnering up with people you can do it yourself so that in turn we took gap funding and then we turned it into an all-inclusive thing all inclusive in the terms of what what you lack we're going to help you provide you go to a lot of gurus and a lot of shops and a lot of seminars where you pay to have somebody teach you how to use funding and how to grow funding but we're actually doing where we're helping people from day one they fill out the application online i know you've seen the gap funding link on there the um you can you can use that gap funding link for anything finance related you uh anything unsecured related so underneath that gap funding umbrella and if i'm talking too fast you can cut me off or, or put a question in the chat i have the chat open <laughs> to help out if you need have any questions but under the gap funding umbrella there is four main parts there's unsecured lending unsecured lending is non-recourse non-asset based lending so that's lending, that's personal term lending, that's cash to the client. It's not a credit card, it's not a line of credit, it's cash straight to the client. Personal term loans can be used for whatever purpose. We fund from 10,000 all the way up to uh, 350,000, some cases more, 
but you you now you're saying it's asset based so what is it based off of it's based off of credit it's based off of income based off of debt to income ratio your dti and it's based off of your credit worthiness so those are the factors for the first branch of gap funding which is unsecured lending or another term for it is personal term loans so people use those if they are trying to start a new business they don't have any business credit established or they don't have any credit established with larger institutions so they come to us to get that funding for their um, for themselves personally to fund their own dreams fund their own entrepreneur fund their own ideas fund their own real estate, fund their own down payment if they're buying a, an investment property because you don't need seasoning for an investment property to uh, source your funds. If you're buying a personal home on Occupy, yes, that money has to be seasoned for 60, 90 days in order for it to pass the sniff test with, um, with, with regular lenders. But as far as buying an investment property or a fix and flip, you can use this money for that. The lenders don't care. They just want to know that you have the money for your down payment. So it can be used for that as well. The next phase of it is business term loans. Business term loans are for an established business that's already established that is trying to increase their, their revenue, increase their working capital to, to stave off hard times or you know to open a new location. So that money is basically for business people that have a business, have a, a business that's been around for a year or two years, and, and you can you can qualify for that with your business credit. Maybe you have done in Bradstreet, maybe you have Hoover's, maybe you have all of this stuff already established that you can go to the next level. So the third branch of the gap funding umbrella is personal term line of credit. So if you already have established credit lines and installment loans that you already have on your credit, you have over two, three years of history on, you, you're you more apt to get qualified for a personal line of credit with our program. And most people use personal line of credit if they're trying to save some capital, excuse me, for their rehab project or for their business, and they don't want to use their business, they want to use this, or so their business doesn't have any um, any credit established, so they use it for this purpose. So that's the third level. The fourth level is business line of credit. So business line of credit is everything. Business line of credit encompasses your business. Um, funding line of credit it encompasses business credit cards, and it encompasses a business line of credit that's from 100000 up to a million. The million line of credit, obviously, no one's getting that right away. But that million dollar line of credit can be established by starting with the business line of credit on the lower end and then working your way up to the larger line of credits that are out there, which it come, when it comes to, you know, let's say, you know, you want to be your own bank, you have a hundred thousand dollar line of credit to start. And then the next goal is to, I want to, you know, have a million dollar line of credit. So what do I need to do, Tyrone, to get to that point? So we walk you through that whole process. So I broke down the four parts. This first, you know, part one of four or phase two, if you want to call it, because I did the other video when I explained everything, <laughs> the basic, the basics of um, the four branches of the um, of gap funding is you have to start somewhere. Somebody comes to you and say, I want a five hundred thousand dollar line of credit for, you know, personal line of credit. They don't have any credit cards or any trade lines over a thousand dollars. They're not going to get that. They go to a big bank. The big bank is going to deny them right off the bat. Right? We're not that type. We're not going to tell them you're denied or we can't qualify you. We're going to tell them, look, your credit is you know six fifty. You need a seven hundred to get there, or let's let's get the ten thousand or the twenty thousand dollar loans. Pay those for a year. Use those loans to grow your establish to grow your credibility to grow your establish your your trade line history not just in trade lines just unsecured lending to go on that path to grow your um, to grow your your um, your credit worthiness to get qualified for those bigger loans so we'll walk you through every step of the way if they want it a lot of clients don't want it you know they want one thing and they they can't get it they can't have it so you know, they take their ball and go home. But our establishment is geared to help them get to where they need to be. With with Sequoia um, and GAP funding and how it works together, you know, I joke about this with Alan all the time, we're your preferred lender's preferred lender. So if you have 
a gap or an unsecured lender that you work with or a business line of credit lender that you work with, we are more than likely the last stop for a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys with the credit challenges and the 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 devaluation of the dollar and and the 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 credit structure that's going on with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and and Vantage 8 and Score 8 with the new um, credit laws a lot of these people are not as either they're too big to move or they're not big enough to move with all the changes that are going on but we're in the perfect place for that a lot of these lenders are calling us on a daily basis I have this client we can't get qualified partnering with us to go and, and and help their clients get what get where they need to go, but the biggest the biggest um, I think the biggest I wouldn't call it a downfall, but the biggest wave in the industry right now is that two years ago somebody can just sign a name on a dotted line and get a hundred thousand dollars. Those days are gone. The days of work is are here now. We put the work in. You have a client that they're not quite there yet. We're putting the work to help them with their credit, doing a rapid rescore, doing different things to get them you know, over the hump to qualify for what their end goal is. Maybe it's going to take three phases to get to that end goal, but we are already there. We're already, we have the knowledge and the, and the manpower to get them there. So another aspect of gap funding that is really prevalent is Unsecured lending is not just you having clients that you can get qualified for loans. Unsecured lending branch of gap funding is a business model that you can apply to any business that you're currently running or you know somebody that's running a business. What, what that means is you as a, as a Sequoia um, uh, partner can offer financing. Any business you know out there that is struggling, or you know the the days of the days of cash paying clients are gone, they can offer financing. There are a lot of financing companies out there like Care Credit, which uh, a Rock Financial, um, Hearth with with construction workers and general contractors. A lot of those guys come to us for for um, for extra know how clients they can't get done. They come to us with that. So with that being said is a lot of these companies, they charge the, 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 the client or the business, like they charge a general contractor to, for use of their system, for use of their, you know, their products. They, they put a lien on houses. They put liens on properties when it comes to different finance options. We don't do any of that. We have car dealerships that come to us and say, you know, we want to use your product to offer financing to our clients or fleet service companies that want to use us for their commercial products, uh, general contractors that they're working on someone's house and they, they can't get their client approved with whoever finance company they're working with, they come to us and say, look, we want you to sign up. We want our customers to come to you to get qualified, to get the money they need to remodel their home or you know, put a roof on or solar panels or whatever, whatever you, whatever, whatever it is. And then we put them in a position to not only refer a client and get business and maybe an upgrade, but there's no, there's nothing out of the pocket of your client. You're the business that is your client. The client pays all the fees. The customer pays all the fees. Your client, the business, they don't pay anything. So that's another avenue, another stream of income for you guys on top of just having clients that need money for real estate or need money for working capital or need money for business. Uh, uh, to start their business or to grow their business, you guys have everything at your disposal. Um, and when it comes to the, the setup, I don't want you guys to say, okay, well, I have a client that needs $100,000 and they don't qualify for it and they won't walk away. You say, okay, well, let me see their income. Let me see their credit score. Let me see their trade lines, everything they have. And then we'll put the package together for them. You might not qualify for 100,000 right off the bat, but you'll qualify for 3040. They qualify for 3040. We teach them how to set up their escrow account to make their payments in escrow for nine to 12 months. So they can they can pay that money on time, set it and forget it. And then within nine to 12 months, they qualify for that hundred thousand. So we just don't, you know, approve and deny. It's a process to work with everyone and put them in a position to, to, to win. 
So with that being said, I just wanted to let you guys know, you see the gap funding link on, on, on the site is not just gap funding when it comes to real estate. We do unsecured lending, non, non recourse lending, business credit, business line of credit, personal line of credit. It just depends on where the client qualifies and where they fit. And if the client fits properly in the system, they will benefit from it. We just funded someone um, by the, the, the client's name was Shannon. They wanted the money for their business, um, for their, um, uh, to, um, to, to have business capital for their business, working capital. That client went to other lenders, went to other banks themselves and couldn't get qualified. But they were able to come through our system and get something. They wanted a certain amount and we were able to get pretty close to the amount that they wanted as far as the funding goes. But the trick is, how are you? where you package files, how we submit the files, they fight for our business. So you guys have a whole team of people. Uh oh. I hope I'm still here. We had a, a You're back, the, sort of. I'm back? Okay. Thank you. You can hear me? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. So what I was trying to say is the client, I don't know where I left off at, but the client that we got funded basically went to um, a lot of consumer lenders that we have relationships with. And the consumer lenders that they went to that we have relationships with, they couldn't get funding. They came to us, we got them funding through our same consumer lending relationships because the relationship that we've established with these lenders over the last you know five or 10 years they fight for our business. They fight for for our business. They they com they're competitive with rates. They're competitive with terms. They're competitive with everything because of the relationships we have. So we know we package the files the right way. We have a we have a very good um, close ratio with them first time. So so when it comes to what's at your disposal, I don't know if you guys heard that before, but I'm going to repeat it anyway because I like saying it. <laughs> what you guys have at your disposal is a whole arsenal of people that are willing to work with the person, you know, go over the credit with them, tell them, look, you need to do this, this, and this to get where you need to be or start here, get this funding, and then work your way up to the, the bigger funding um, or what, what they're trying to get money for, down payment for, you know, or no, I'm sorry, like I have, we have one client right now that we just got funded. They tried to get they were buying a small you know, investment property. They wanted all the money for that investment property at one time through the gap funding. It's like, okay, I didn't get qualified for you know, 200,000. Well, it's income-based. You, know, you, you have to qualify DTI income-based wise. So they, they weren't able to qualify, right? So what we did was we looked at their situation and we said, look, you have a property. Why don't you do two loans? Why don't you go with a fix and flip loan and then you can go with uh, the um, the unsecured loan and put them together. Use the unsecured loan for your down payment, for your closing costs, for your soft costs, appraisal fees, and all of that. And then you can put it together and then you won't have to rely solely on one or trying to get 100% from the other. The, the, the unsecured loan is not a second lien. So you only have one lien on your property and you have one lane that's, that you can essentially use like working capital line of credit for that property that you're buying. So, so it's just about education. They come in with one mindset and we work in to say, look, this is the mindset you should have when it comes to the, the process of using financing, using other people's money to work for you. So we have the education on the front end and the education on the back end. The education on the back end is really important because whatever your end goal is, our goal is to put you in a position to get into a more secure loan or get into a loan that um, that is a lower payment, lower rate, so you can reap the advantages of your um, of your investment. So, and another question I got from someone is, can you use all of the loans at the same time? Certainly, if you're trying to maximize your income. 
I, we, we've had people that have gotten a personal loan, um, a personal term loan, the unsecured loan, and they have a business. So they use the business um, line of credit as well. If they qualify for it, put them together to maximize their funding. You, it's not one or the other. You know, you can use two or three or four different types of loans in this process to make it to, you know, to, to, to make the return on your investment make sense. The biggest thing is I tell people is make sure you have an exit strategy, make sure you have your repayment plan worked out. You don't want to get all these loans and then not able to pay it. You know, like, you know, you have clients that want to use it for a vacation. <laughs> you can use it for a vacation, but you know, it might, um, it might not be advantageous, you know, but, but yeah, I've got a, got another question it says, do you consult the client with gap funding? Yes. Most clients will have, like I said before, most clients will have their mind made up of what they want to do. But when we come in, we tell them, look, you can do this, this, and this with that money. Um, you, you should be able to do this. Okay. You want to make sure that you're paying this money back on time. The client, we just fund it. We, um, or the, the client, we funded like three in a row, but the client we funded um, just recently, they were going to deny the money because they didn't have their property lined up. And then we told them, look, that's not advantageous because if you don't take the money and you don't have a property lined up and you want to line it up at the same time, you're going to have to start that process all over again from day from scratch. And, and it's a 10 to 15 day process if you're on it, if you're on it, on it and getting everything done in a timely manner, it could be faster, but I always tell people, you know, over, uh, under promise, over deliver, 100%. So when I tell them that is, I tell them, take the money. Well, what happens if I have to have a payment right away? Well, the goal in my, in my thing is get the money, look at what six months payments are like, put six month payments away on auto pay so they're paid while you look for the property. Look for a property, now you have your down payment. Now you have your EMD, because if you didn't have EMD in the first place and you came and got the money, then you denied it you, or you didn't accept it. You put everything on hold for you found a property. And now you need to put an EMD on your property. And you don't have any funds. So I always tell people, get the money and use it for what you need to use it for. And we will help you set it up to where you're, you're safe. The next question we got was, what is the minimum credit score needed to apply for a gap funding loan? For a personal term loan, you have to have a 650 credit score across all three bureaus. It has to be a 650 or higher. For the personal line of credit, it has to be 700 or higher. For business term loans, it has to be 680 or higher. And Antoinette, the, next, the last one is the line of credit one. You don't really have to have a credit score. You just have to have a value or a, a business that has been around for at least a year. So if you have a business that's been around for a year, you can basically use your business credit. If you don't have business credit, you're using this loan to establish business credit because there you don't have to have a personal guarantor. But everything else, you do have to have credit. You do have to have income. You do have to show a DTI. But to, to make everything, you know, to wrap everything in a pretty bow, what is GAP funding? It's money for working capital, real estate, expanding business, starting a business, investing in other business if you want you know you know you can use this money to get qualified to invest in sequoia's per, um, investments and, and properties and management you can use it for that if people are looking to to get established in investments you can use it this money to steer them in that direction to use it for investment that way you're not responsible for you know handling their money you're just responsible for them investing and giving them a vehicle to get capital to invest so that's the that's the nuts and bolts in a nutshell of gap funding and what you guys have at your disposal you have oh yeah the next question is i was actually going to answer that patrick do you use one application for all loans yes the how you answer the questions will determine it will help us to determine what you need so when you click on the gap funding application on the on the website you click on it you go through all the the steps you have a business if you're self-employed or if you say if you click both on the application if you're a wage earner and self-employed i'm automatically going to assume you want to apply for um the un unsecured lending and for the business lending so unless you tell me otherwise you're going to be submitted for you're going to be submitted to both but if you don't want to be submitted to both you just determine you know you clarify which one you want to be submitted for, and then we'll go from there. But yes, 
you could just one application and then we kind of handhold you through the rest of the process. And then on the back end as well, if you want to add, you know, okay, well, I didn't get enough money for a personal term loan. So can you add business or can add personal line of credit if I qualify? Then yeah, we can go back in and say, this is the paperwork needed for that. And we can make that happen. So, but I'm opening up to questions, guys. I, that's why I didn't want to go through everything because I wanted to break it up into four parts because it's a lot to digest. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them now, and then we can take the next 15, 20 minutes to answer any direct questions, or if you have any files that you want to get a question on that you're looking to submit now, or 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 questions from clients, but you guys are more than welcome. Yep, I have one question. Um, you said something that put a big smile, but all of it put a smile on my face, but um, I'm a contractor, so we doing kitchens and bathrooms. We actually got a client right now needs to get a um, thirty thousand dollar loan to get the project off the road you know to get it started i think they only qualify for about 15 from their bank so mm -hmm. here's my question as a contractor when i go in and give estimates and i say okay the kitchen gonna cost you let's just say 20 grand mm -hmm. can i call you know support you for get funding or haven't put out an application have it work and if they qualify for that money now, here's the ultimate one now. This is happened to me. When you, if it's for the kitchen, can my name go on that as well or does it go straight to the customer? Because I've been there, we did a lot of work, took us a whole week, one time, week and a half, and then a company on this one customer gave them a check. They took the check and brought a car, went on vacation, never got it done. And so we did all that work for nothing, you know, but years ago, they used to put the contract and the customer name on that on that check. So how, how would that work out? You That's a really good question. So there's two ways you can do that. And yes, they don't do that anymore. A lot of the consumer lenders, they switched up how they operate. So, so you can do one of two things. They have to get the money legally, you know, for legal reasons, they have to get the money and it's not a check they get cash. So it's direct deposit literally straight into their account. So how you can work that out is, if your start is if, if it's before you start a job, yeah, let them, you know, get the money and then you establish that, you know, however much you get for a deposit or whatever, that's fine. But like in your case, you already started the job, you, you know, you you're well capitalized to start the job and now they have to pay you and you want to do it that way. All you do is you set up an escrow account. So the minute they get funded, they have to fund that escrow account. So that escrow account basically will say, this money goes into the, you You go to an escrow company, depending on what state or city you live in, you find a, a local or online escrow company, put that money in escrow and then, or, or set an escrow account and tell them to fund that escrow account with that. So how they fund the escrow account is they know they're getting such and such funding, you know, from us. And then it's going to take like three or four days, whatever, to get that funding. So they will write a check to the escrow account and that check will sit in the escrow account. So that check that they write to escrow account for that amount, based on your instructions as a contractor, will get cash whether they like it or not. So they can't take that money right and right and you know and buy a car. That check, even though they don't have the funds in the account yet, that check will basically be an earmark for them to basically um, uh, to basically uh, complete a transaction. So, so as a contractor, you're basically using the escrow company as your accounts receivable or accounts, or I'm sorry, accounts payable um, arm. And a lot of my contractors, they like this option better because it's cash, because there's no lien you have to put on the person's house. You don't have to do anything, no mechanics lien. You're just dealing with cash. You get money, you get paid right away. And then the person doesn't have to worry about paying off a loan that's attached to their property. The loan is attached to them personally. So. All right, perfect, perfect. Okay. Yeah. And I've crossed your fingers. I have any issues with any of my contractors with doing it that way. So, <laughs> so. all right. That sound good. Yes, sir. And, and, and Brian, that's how I got started in this business, um, uh, by the way, with, with general contractors. I come from a general contractor family in the background, and we were dealing with Hearth, and we're dealing with all these other companies yep. that. Uh -huh insane with their fees and what they charge and the process to get qualified it was insane so we said what's another option so 
we took this option to replace that and it's worked out well for the last five years. Perfect, yes, sir. Any more questions? I know I wasn't that good guys, so. <laughs> So, but, um, but yeah, uh, we're going to be continuing this series as well. Next week, we'll do part two to dive into the process more in the more, more detail, the process that we go through after the application is filled out and after the documents are uploaded. So you guys will know like, what's going on with my loan? Why is, what, why is the delay? Why is this? Why is that? So you'll know what the, um, you know, what the behind the curtain, you know, behind the Wizard of Oz <laughs> curtain is all about. So, so that's what we're going to do next week. But, but yeah, but I don't have any more. But if you have any more questions, I would love to answer them. Okay, one more. So with the business line of credit, um, with the with no docs, I should say, or um, without the credit score, you were saying, that's the business line, right? But your cash. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the business line of credit is is a very great one, and you don't need personal credit, but the business has to have some credit, right? It, it either has to have a Dun & Bradstreet number or a couple of vendors that, you know, that they have had for a little bit that we can use that as credit. Um, you, when you get the business line of credit, you don't want to tie it to your personal. That's why we keep those two separate. Okay. You go by what the, uh, just the business line of credit or also like account receivables or what we made so far? So I like get a date of hey. 100,000 to that take consideration if somebody want to get a loan for like 50,000 for line of credit. Does it take um... Yeah, they could yeah, they could do that. The thing is the line of credit will be commensurate with basically, you know, the last two years um, revenue to see what that is and <clears throat> and then they could put it together with um, with the business personal loan and the line of credit. So they can get that 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 first injection of, of capital, and then the line of credit will come in as a backup. So, so, <clears throat> so I, I recommend people do both. But the line of credit can be in the form of credit business credit cards, and it could be in the form of or, of a line of credit only. But it just depends on what their um, what their status is. And I got two other questions. Um, I don't know which one came first. I got a raised hand from Margaret Say, and I got a, can you fund restaurant purchase equipment? You can use the money for anything. It, it's it's cash to them, it's unsecured, so non-recourse, so they can use the money for absolutely any any purchase they want. Purchasing a car, go on vacation, pay for their daughter's wedding, which I don't recommend, <laughs> but they can do, use the money for anything, any purpose. And um, Margaret Say, you had a question? Hey. Um, yes, I have a <clears throat> two question. Uh, first of all, uh, how much is the maximum allowed uh, for personal credit and uh, also the minimum? How a, also, how much is allowed for business credit? And I have a um, <clears throat> client, they have a, a property under uh, their name but they just don't want to provide the bank statement. They don't want to provide uh, their uh, detailed information about rental income, but they want to uh, borrow some money. Um, is there a, a way to do a gap funding for them uh, to, uh, currently they have a first mortgage on the properties and they don't want to touch their first. Is there any suggestion for this? It <clears throat> only suggestion I have for them is it's going to be really expensive. They don't want to supply any documentation. If that first mortgage on the property is a rental property, we have no doc loan options that they can they can utilize, but you're talking about 14, 15% interest rate. So only they have to supply is a lease agreement and their schedule E of their tax returns. If they don't want to supply bank statements to show that at least the income is coming in for the last 12 to 24 months, and then we can work with them that way. But if they don't wanna show anything there, that's gonna be hard. On the personal side, if their income is only coming from rental income, then for the personal line of credit, they have to show income. 
because how else are we going to lend them the loan because it's not based on property on the other side if they want to do the personal line of credit it's not it's non-recourse non-asset based so they would have to show income like tax returns and schedule e but it's from ten thousand to three hundred fifty thousand on the personal side they have to have a 650 credit score and if you want to have an idea of what people will qualify for i do it i do it this way i just take the general number hundred thousand dollars if they make $100,000 on their taxable income, not their gross, not after everything's written off, their, their taxable income, if they're self-employed, is 100000 and their DTI is under 30%, they're looking to get between 75 and 100% of what they make. It goes down for every 5% over. So if their DTI is 30, their debt to income ratio is 35%, they're looking at about 50 to 75% of their taxable income. So if their DTI is 40, they're looking at probably 50% of what they make um, as a taxable income. Over 45, they probably won't get qualified or they'll get qualified for something, but it won't be, you know, it'll probably be the standard 10 to 30,000 or, or 20 to 35,000 max is what they would get. But it depends on that. The business side, 700 credit score across the board on all bureaus. And that's up to 400,000. And it's just based on the same thing, based on the revenue you have and based on what you bring in as a company on a consistent basis. So you can have a, you can make a consistent $500,000. You write it all off. There's no depreciation, no ad backs. So you're looking at whatever that, um, whatever that taxable income is as your barometer for your debt to income ratio. So if they don't want to supply any documents, then you're looking at loan shark money. <laughs> if they want to supply documents, then you're looking at um, you know getting them something very minimum. If they don't want to supply bank statements, let's just we'll we'll look at that and then we'll give them their options and then let that sticker shock, basically that interest rate shock them and tell them, look, if you just supply your tax returns and lease agreements, this is what your this is the amount you can get and this is what your payment can be. So I would do that. Thank you. You're welcome. And then you said, how long will it take to complete? They get a they get a um, a welcome call if they're approved, with or welcome email when they're approved with their projections within 24 hours, and they have to respond to that. Schedule a welcome call to go over it with one of our consultants, and then one of our consultants will go over all the documentation, the next steps with them, and then once they supply all their documents, you're looking at like I said before, 10 to 15 business day turnaround time. And I think Elaine had a question. I thought so. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm great, thanks. Uh, the question I have is, uh, I didn't hear anyone asking this. What's the commission like as far as a uh, business loan is concerned? The business, the business loan commission is the same as a personal loan. There, it just depends on what your contract is when you signed up with Sequoia. So I don't go over that part, but whatever it is, it's the same. It's the same as what it is for um, you like your fix and flip business and real estate business, and also the personal term loan business. So, okay, um, it, it's, it's volume based. So everything is lumped into the same thing, volume based. But yeah, I would talk to Alan about that. I don't, I don't deal with that part. Okay, thanks. No problem. You're welcome. Now, people, I know I'm not that good, so <laughs> it must be late. So. It's okay. You're fine. You did a great job. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, but basically, same time next week. Tune in, please, everyone, so we could um, go to round two. But I will be going over, like I said, the inner workings of the process of of what you know, what we do as as opposed to um, other lenders and how their process works when it comes to working with the clients, holding their hand, collecting documents, and how that helps the process along, and how to speed up the process for you guys when you submit clients, and I how you can help in that as well. Okay, excuse me, I have a question. Yes, yes. Hi. Um, hi, this is Abrilla Robinson. I'm in North Carolina. I have a client right now who um, wants to um, um, wants to to build a crematory for mm -hmm. his funeral business. Mm -hmm. 
but he, he's in the process of doing his taxes now in order to have the tax return for the this year and the year after. Because you talked about gap funding, I remember him saying that um, he could only get like $25,000 line of credit at the bank, but he has over a million dollar business. And so mm -hmm. um, when you were talking about gap funding this evening, I thought to myself, would, would it enhance his business to have a million dollars worth of a line of credit? and then still be able to come back and do the construction loan for the crematory and the other things that he wanted to do to update his property. He'd been in business for like 57 years. I was just gonna say, if the bank is only giving him 25,000, he must've changed his name in like the last year. But if he's been in business for 57 no. years, that's that's insane. That, that's absolutely insane. If he has a business that's been around for that long, he hasn't changed banks in the last five years. He hasn't changed his business name. Mm -hmm. You know, you know how people change their business name or partner. Yes. To, if he hasn't done anything like that, mm -mm. Um, they're they're attaching his personal credit to that, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're leaning more on his personal credit. And I'm not judging his credit. I don't know what it is, but I'm saying that's that's in my opinion. I've mm -hmm. seen that happen a lot. So if that's the case. We need to look at his business. If his business is, is grossing a million dollars, I don't know what his net or his taxable income is, but if it's grossing mm -hmm. a million, mm -hmm. we need to look at establishing his vendors and his Dun & Bradstreet and his Hoovers right away, like tomorrow. Like, you know, send me an email <laughs> and then we need to do that tomorrow because then we'll get him some vendors right away and then get him some accounts receivable and then we can use the business as the weight. And then we can also look at his personal and see how much we get him for personal. And he doesn't have to get a construction loan. Just get it all in one. Just get oh. one big um, um, unsecured loan using business and personal. And then mm -hmm. it okay. Uh, what's your what's your email? It's um, Tyrone. Um, it's just normal spelling T Y R O N E mm -hmm. at Gap Funding. Partners document, and I'm going to put it in the chat too. Okay, great. I will. I'll get with him because uh, you know he says the CPA has been working on his taxes because he took an extension, and uh, I kept saying, but you know there are other things that we could do, but um, he was so focused on you know getting the paperwork and mm -hmm. you know and you can't move forward unless you have your taxes from the last two years, so. Yeah, and if he if he if he has a if he's doing his taxes right now, mm -hmm. we you can, I mean, don't give tax advice, but you can kind of steer him into what he needs to qualify. You know, don't tell him what to do. Just tell him, look, if you want to qualify for you know to even two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. you know, we look at your credit report and I'll determine his DTI and say, look, you need like one hundred fifty take home, you know, taxable income, so we can see, uh, give him an accurate approval number. And if he if he if he made more last year mm -hmm. and then we're using this year as a barometer, mm -hmm. just file an extension and don't do it. You know, like okay. we'll just do 2021 and 2020 and then 2022, if it's not that great and he wants to do more write-offs, let him keep the write-offs. Just you know, just we'll just say he filed an extension for 2022 and then use that as um, you know, as backup if needed. But if he's okay. willing to um use some income and do less write-offs to qualify mm -hmm. like i said don't steer him but just say this is what you need to qualify and, and tell him i'll you know i'm just giving you an information not tax advice <laughs> okay great because he talked about that because he says well you know we're a million dollar business but we try to write off as much as we can yeah. and so i i think that had um um makes a difference in how much you can borrow right Yes, yes. What is okay. this tax income? Yeah, it's bottom line. Right. Yeah. It's net. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, then I'm going to try to make sure that you get in touch with him tomorrow. His name is Hugh Sanders, and um, it's uh, Hugh Sanders Funeral Home. Okay, okay. Yeah, then because once he fills out, well, we get a picture of what his overall business is like, and then mm -hmm. we'll have him fill out the application and gather all the documents you need and go through the process. But it sounds like 
we just have to look at this whole picture. I, I think it has something to do with combining personal and business together. Uh, I really do. I've seen that a lot, actually, but it's, it's unfortunate. But you've been with the bank for so long and your business makes so much. Yeah. They reward you for that. Yeah. Well, they own all their property and they own probably about a half million dollars worth of property. Yeah, it, it has to be the bank is penalizing them for probably something as, as tiny as probably a missed payment a year ago on something, so. Right, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Nice talking. Nice talking to you too, thank you. Uh, I know Alan's gone. I don't know if he's gonna cut off on us at six o'clock, but I know he's scheduled an hour, <laughs> so. I want to ask you, Tyrone. So, oh, like, as far as Sequoia representatives, when we put our own stuff through, get a little discount on the interest rates and everything, right? On the fees. <laughs> I give us a break, baby. We bringing the. You ask you ask me to go <laughs> on the on the fees, of course. On interest rate, I can't do anything about that, brother. I, I don't have that much pull, but on the fees, yes, of course. Yes, All right, okay. Because basically, <laughs> you're a contractor. You establish your own account. Basically, you're you're your own account. Like you're bringing in this account as a contractor. So of course, of course. okay, we'll work that. I'll work that out with Alan. And you got Lewis. a phone number, or you just want to email you? Let me yeah. get your phone number. Tell me. Yeah, it's nine four nine two nine five four one three three. I'll put nine, it in there. Five, four one three. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll make sure when when Alan and and when everyone makes the video available on YouTube, I think it takes like a couple of days to do it. So it should be available on YouTube. And the original video we did is available on YouTube too. It, the video quality is terrible because I was using my phone. <laughs> but it's a good video. It's 45 minutes of great information. Yeah. All right, guys. I think. Somebody else had a question. Marcus, do you have another question? Or that was from, I think that was from before. I think it was. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great night. I know it's nine o'clock. It's not past my bedtime, but I hope everybody have a great evening. And I will talk next week. Same time. Again, register. Same time next week. We'll get on and we'll we'll continue the conversation, guys. So. Have a great night. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Have a great evening. You too. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Great presentation. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for your help. Bye. Many years. You're years. welcome. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Thank you, Tyrone from Patrick. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.